Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good night. Welcome back to VIOC in action. This is your boy, Mr. Leon Hunt, but I'm known as Ross Books. One time for the one time count, cool count, quench. Hey, we are here in VIOC in action. Today is a very special show because guess what? We always talk about the Olympic Committee, the Olympic movement. Um, we talk about all our athletes update. We talk about health. We talk about preparation. We talk about fitness training. We talk about the whole nine yards, like literally. This is your number one sports show in the territory, not across the world, because that's how it is. We hear Virgin Islands strong. All right, so look, like I say, this whole year, guess what? Happy New Year's because it's 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 still a New Year's. Happy New Year's if you missed the last two shows. Make sure you go back and listen to them though on YouTube. Um, but definitely, Happy New Year's to everybody. Um, this is 2020. We're getting prepared for our Tokyo. 2020 so japan 2020 tokyo 2020 this olympic year and as we doing our shows for the beginning part of the year is we trying to get as much of the virgin island olympians so we can understand literally how they got to what how, how they got qualified their experiences in the last previous uh, um, olympics and and hear that we know we got a lot of time we hear them well we see them in the newspaper we see little clips of interview with them on 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 the on the on, on TV or online, but we never really got chances to gain depth to how the athlete were actually preparing, what going on. You know, like I turn the newspaper, but uh, you said one thing, the next thing you know they change it up, and you're like, wait, I ain't say it like that. So no, everybody got a chance to tell their own story from their own mouth, and that's how it is. So today's show. We got one of our nice boxers in here, the man got hard right, you know the man, um, from St. Thomas, Rock City, Clayton, how's everything? Boom, bam, bam, what's going on people out there, man? Oh, boom, everything bam, is good. bang. Everything is good, man, happy new year to the listeners, man, hope everybody has a blessed and prosperous 2020. Definitely, man, um, welcome to the show, I know we already been on the show Earlier, well, mid last year, which was great. Um, that was just before we enter into our Virgin Island Athletes Commission, which is great. We'll talk about that later on in the show. I ain't want to get too much of the information. I know, but Clayton, what's up, man? Um, it actually been a while. We we here we here in Rock, but it been a while since I seen you. So so definitely happy New Year's to you, man, and um, welcome back to the show. Definitely, man. Thanks for having me once again, man. You know, we are always hustling and busting. I see you. I see you, but you don't see me, man, in a big old truck. I can see, I see you from time, but you ain't see me. But it's all good to catch up with the man when we do catch up. <laughs> you see that? It's all good, man. So, Clayton, starting out for the people, them. I know the people them know you, right? Because you come from a very boxing family everybody in the Virgin and they just they they love boxing and um because your 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 dad you know um definitely it must be an honor to actually like like how how growing up in a family of boxers affected your life literally like growing up into what you are today it's funny man i never wanted to be a boxer dude growing up i never wanted to be a boxer i was into football and basketball mm -hmm. i was i was not a great in basketball but i was good in football i was big i was fast and i was strong and in football, those are three of the basic keys that you need to be yeah. a defense man. So that was my thing. And I had decent hands, so I could receive the ball as well. Mm -hmm. But um, I was really good in football. Had a few um, colleges that came through, some D2s, some D3s. And I even got offered a walk-on spot for yeah. D1 uh, in Florida. But um, I did boxing in the interim just to get into shape for football. Right. Ended up doing that and I fall in love because I love the sport. Right. But I didn't want to participate in the sport. And uh, my dad's like, yo, come to the gym, do some workouts, you're getting fat, let's go. Let's do and it. that's literally how it started, and that opened the door for me to travel. Uh -huh. And when I started traveling, I was like, yo, football never took me. <laughs> right, 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 right. St. Croix. Right. You know, so now that I get to go, my passport's being stamped, um, seeing different places, I'm traveling frequently. I was like, yo, kind of like this boxing thing, let me see Got what it. it's going to do. And uh, just stuck with it ever since, man, literally. So so you're you're the youngest of two brothers. And the and your older brothers are boxing. The, I call them the champs. Everybody in the family is a champ, correct, literally. Correct, correct, correct. So you seeing them, they're like. So even when you was running ball and playing football, your brothers was boxing because they originally was boxers too, right? Imagine, right? So we all play different sports. Okay, so, so everybody play different. So sports. they play baseball first. They okay. did baseball and boxing. Okay. I did basketball and football. Okay. And we both had. We all had sports that we liked. 
Right, 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 right. But Baxi was just that it's bought for us. Uh, and uh, well, that was it. So in this, so did you think? Your dad, so I got asked because people want another stuff, right? Correct, so, correct. because in a boxing family, your dad, your, your, your father is the world champ, Hall of Fame. Did you think he forced you, you guys, like, hey, just come out and try boxing? And then next thing you know, you're like, yeah, I can keep Iron Man here. Well, you know, actually, he was actually supportive in any sport, like, so he was like, yeah, just yeah. do whatever. So, then, okay, so once all you guys, so I'm sure when you guys was training. All you, all four of you guys was just in the gym, just literally, just, just all, all the boxes there. Yeah, like, it's, it a, it's a lot of talents there. Yeah, we just do it. Like, a lot of sibling rivalries were okay. settled in sparring. Okay, yeah, okay, we used that's to cool. be at the house. We're going to get us. All right, we sparring tomorrow. I got so you. Yes. I got you. All right, so let, let me see. <laughs> this, this is this is twenty twenty. Yes, sir. Um, majority of the majority of our. Virgin Island national athletes came to about 10 years ago 10 mm -hmm. or 12 years so we're gonna say about 2008 Correct. and everybody pretty much kind of going because this is back to Beijing your brothers was a part of Beijing mm -hmm. um, and they went there so when they got qualified for Beijing what was going on in your mind because you was a boxer then too so Correct. back in 08 what happened in 08 when you didn't qualify for Beijing and they did um, oh, I actually cried, man. I was 17, the youngest kid there, mm -hmm. trying to qualify for the Olympics. And that was right before they changed the age limit uh, to be able to go to the Olympics. Before, you could have been 16 to 32. Ah, mm -hmm. And then they moved it to 18 to 34 okay. in 2000 for 2012. So you had to have been an adult. Correct. Okay. So that was the last year that they accepted any, any minors into the Olympics. Right. So I went there. I won my first fight against a seasoned vet. Uh -huh. I'm in the go I'm in the middle round, so now I'm fighting for the brands, fighting for a chance to go fight in the finals. Okay. And I fight against USA, Michael Hunter. Um he was the number one dude in the USA. Mm -hmm. Um he had more skill, more experience than I was, and he was older than I was and he, he beat me. But um my brother John qualified the night before me. Right, right. So like, right, I was right, super right. charged, like, yo, I gotta qualify, right. I gonna make it through. And I lost man, I, I literally cried. After the fight, and everybody's like, "Yo, what are you crying for, man? He's the youngest dude here." Yeah, you medal with how much? I think I had like what seven or eight fights. Yeah, so I wasn't supposed to be there on paper. Right, right, and right, right. Like, Yo, you medal like you represent your country well. You have nothing to keep your head up, head down. Gotcha, gotcha. Got and uh, I was like, "Yo, I gotta get to the Olympics, you know." And uh, I, I was like, "Yo, after that, after they qualified and they told me the experience when they came back, I was like, man." I got, I got big to the Olympics. I got so, this. so late, late summer, which we're going to talk is August, August, mm -hmm. 2018. They came back and they told you about the whole experiences. And even that 2008 Beijing Olympics, they got a chance to meet some swimmers, Correct. the shooters, some track guys. And, uh, it may NBA, be NBA stars too. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not for us, but I mean for our team, because it was actually, that's when the nucleus of our Virgin Island national Olympians started because Correct. But at first it was just boxes, you know, like boxes. But then he was like, "Well, we got track people. Why well, we got swimming over here? We got shooting. Like, wait a second, we actually got more sports in the Virgin Islands that we actually could do the same." Great. They met those people. They came by. They told you the experience, and then starting '08, which now you are, we're going into 2009. You are now 18, Correct. so you're now an adult. How how does boxing set up? Because I know they got amateur boxing. So back then. Preparing now because the next biggest games will either be boxing world championship Correct. or in next four years 20, 2012 to the next Olympics. So what happened? What was your mission starting out from two thousand nine? Uh, my mission was to get to the Olympics. So okay. two thousand nine, I was I went I did a series of Caribbean tournaments, did really well, mm -hmm. and I got a scholarship from AIBA, which is the International Governing Body for Boxing. Okay. Amateur Boxing. Aiba. Aiba. Okay. So I got a scholarship from them to go to Milan, Italy. Milan. For the road to Milan. Okay. Which was the 2009 World Boxing Championships. Okay. So I was living in Italy for about a month and a half. Okay. Training with the Italian Six national weeks. team. Yeah. And different guys from different countries. So like Africans, um, Ukraine, Caribbeans. But we were more um, separated by... The region? Uh, region. Okay. So we were, it was the Caribbean and African region. Okay. So I met with a lot of Caribbean guys and we worked together and actually some guys from uh, the Middle East as well. Mm -hmm. So like um, Jordan and Syria. Mm -hmm. So we trained with those guys and it was really good. It was a really good experience and I was like the top 
heavyweight, heavyweight. That's what I was gonna say, right? To look out for in that school, uh, right, people. right. So my first fight, I went against a guy from Nigeria. Okay, dude was like six eight, looked like DeAndre Wilder, dude. Right, right, big, right. Big, long, tall, dude. <sighs> Awkward, and I just like, man, I was losing the fight. My dad was like, yo, you got fight, right, I just right. Went in there and just threw my heart on the floor and just gave it all. One by uh, two points. It yeah, pong up this man. 10 12, which That's was a great win. Uh, we had uh, moved on to the second round and actually did the best out of all like, the athletes that came up. Mm -hmm. Moved on to the second round, fought a guy who I trained with. Okay. And I tore him apart in sparring. Right, 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 and right, right. He just was seasoned, man. I was 19. Uh, you know, yeah, I just turned 19. Yeah, yeah. this is 2009. And yeah. he was a seasoned vet. So he used. All the stuff that I displayed in yeah. sparring, he used it against, against you, right? Me, I mean, but that's smart, me. that's smart, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then, it's not wrong with it, right? Right, right. I right. just didn't know how to deal with it at that time, and he ended up beating me by like two points. Mm -hmm. And it was a he was he had nothing else, but he ended up going on to lose in a sec, his next match, mm -hmm. you know. So that was that was it for me for the world championships, which is 2009. <sighs> 2009. So, uh, for the younger listeners out there, so you guys know, as you could already see. Sports can take you across the world to travel and get exposed to other shoot, parameters of the area and growing up and learning things, different cultures. You learn how to deal with leadership. You learn how to be part of a team. You learn how to deal with somebody else's culture different from your culture. And it teaches you how to lose because you got to learn how to lose and deal with that situation, you know. Okay. Um, so sports can develop a person character as it did to yourself today. Um, so... 2009, we gone through that. You end up losing from the man that done Tifa your tricks and stuff, beat you up his sleeve. Mm -hmm. It's all cool. And also, like you said, before that match, you went in there with the guy that was 6'8". Looking at a guy, people, I mean, yeah, you could get intimidated, but you just don't know what you could do. You go in there, you could either lose from him before you even started out. We say, you know what, correct, let me correct, go in correct. there. We all in the ring. This is how we're going to do. Hey, it, it only could be one, one winner here. You got to give it all one by two points. There it is. Confidence going to the next round. Bam. All right. That now coming in from that whole year, take a little time off going into 2010. 2010, we talk about 2010 a lot because that's when we had our CAC games. True. And that was in Mayaguez, Puerto Rico. And for those people who don't know, well, who don't know what those are, for so every Olympiad year we have. So Olympics is Olympics, right? So after Olympics, we usually have an off year. Um, and in that off year, each discipline of sport has their championship, mm -hmm. wherever it is, right? It's not the games, but they have the each championship, whatever. It's a boxing got a championship, track got their own swimming. Everybody got a championship. Then going into the next year, which would be an even um, year, um, then they would have the CAC games. Correct. And what the CAC games is, is when that year before, you usually qualify for the CAC games with uh, your timing or your ranking or whatever it is. So now we're talking about 2010 CAC games, Maya Goes, which is, it was brilliant. We only were, it was right there, 20 minute flight across mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. We ain't got to take no nine hour flight to any place else. No. Bang, bang, boom. Right? So we there, Maya Goes. This is the time, at this time, that we learn from other shows. Track team literally turned in from four people to 15 people. Um, and then we had other uh, sports there. So this is the time now where we actually get to meet our partnering teammates Correct. from other sports. And um, I think that's where we met back then in 2010 too as well in um, the CAC game. So how did your CAC experience go in my guys? My CAC um, was, was great actually. I was light, I was in shape. And I came out there to win gold, like literally. Yeah. Oh, sorry. We had a base. Our base. We had a baseball yep, team. And and so we, team. yeah, yeah. So actually, that 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 two thousand and a cycle, and I damn remember we had a lot of sports. That, yeah. We had about almost maybe sixty people in our delegation, maybe even eighty. That was that biggest, one year. That was yeah. Seen. That was the biggest one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember now. Where us everything. Yeah. Seen. Oh wow. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I came there like ready to to like ready to. To fly like I came mm -hmm. out in 2009 with a great, 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 great run. Um, so I came with all the juice for CACs. Came there, fought Mexico in the first round, um, beat him 13, you know, 30, I think it's 13, 10, or 14, 11. Mm -hmm. Beat Mexico the first round, nice and smooth. I boxed him. I uh, went to the second round again, fought a friend, uh, from the Dutch Antilles. Okay, uh, his so, name is Benji. Okay, okay. 
So now I went out there and I got better since he saw me in Milan. Right, right, so right. So I, right. I, I think you saw that fight. Yeah, yeah. Man, yep, I'll, yep. I'll box the brakes off of this dude. <laughs> Blacked his eye, bust his nose, bust his lip. Oh. I came out unbruised and scaled. Yeah. And he beat me three to two. Mm. I scored only two points for that whole fight. Right. And it was insane. Like he came to me after the fight, like, yo, man, you, you won. And he went on to lose uh, his next fight to Puerto Rico's right. uh, Victor de Bisbal, who I ended up beating, meeting and beating later on right. um, in my amateur career. And it was just, uh, again, it was rough for me. I was like, man, why why did I get robbed? Like, they right, robbed right. me. You know? but, but I, that's true. I mean, hey, that's, I mean, and, and, and I, I can say it. I mean, when you're at games, okay. In any sport, and we have the we have the audience, the spectators, we have the participants, and then we have the officials. Correct. The officials is the people who run the game, you know. And let me tell you something. I coached a basketball game numerous of times, and you miss stuff. You sometimes you get caught up into watching the sport that's actually officiating, and it happens because that's just how, it just is. And you miss things, and it's just human error. And sometimes it just sucks, or you or the other team at home, 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 home country advantage, you exactly. know. And that's just what it is. So it's gonna happen. It's fair play when you in the ring, and 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 that's just how it is. I gonna leave it there, and believe me, it, it happened all across the world. Yeah. Um. Two. So, okay. So that it happened. Mm -hmm. uh, what, oh yeah. All right. So that happened there. Um. Uh, Two thousand ten. You finish out the okay. That's the problem with boxing. I think that when you train in, when you sparring with um, particular members across the world, and you happen to see them again, they could kind of use it against you. I mean, but that's just how the sport is. Exactly. So do you do you put all, all you have in sparring so that I'm like okay, when because you're gonna compete against these people again, that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. So do you put everything out that first time when you're sparring? Or do you develop things to counter it? Like, okay, if you put this out there, you always got to have a counter just in case somebody could stop that. So what's a tip on that if you're going to be sparring with people that you're, in a, uh, that you're in a, going to be competing against? Well, in, my, um, in, in, in uh, Milan, in my ignorance, we were actually being rated. Okay. So they were actually test matches. So they were testing our ability mm -hmm. to rank us based off of our region okay. in Milan. So I actually kind of had to spar a little bit harder than I would for those test matches. Mm -hmm. But um, in reality, sparring is not designed for you to go for the gusto. It's really designed for error. It's to mm -hmm. work on the areas that you are not good in. Okay. If you're not good in jabbing, you work on your jab. If you're not good in head movement, you work on head movement. You work on defense. You know, these are the things that you work on, but you increase your work rate. So you... You work hard on those things to exert yourself and also you push past your your limits so mm -hmm. if you're doing four minutes if you're doing four rounds two minutes you try to do six to eight rounds mm -hmm. because in reality fight stress and sparring stress is different mm -hmm. your sparring stress is a controlled environment right, right it's right. within your norms you get familiar with your sparring partner in mm -hmm. a fight it's fight stress so you talking you're pushing you're heaving you're holding right, you're right, getting right, in right. spike you you hearing the, the crowd, you hearing okay. the corner, you hearing this guy breathing against you, you know, all of these different things are happening. So your body is in a different level of stress. Okay. So sparring is designed to kind of help you to adapt easier to those kind of stresses. So I would also say, if you're going to spar, spar with all, spar with your best, but spar effective sparring. Okay, so, and that's, as you say, so the effective, it, um, so effective sparring is working on your weaknesses sure. mostly than your strength. Sure. So as you build up, which is practicing, you guys. So you so you practice in here, so, which means ideally the next time you do come out, those weaknesses should improve into um, going towards strengths. So so I guess practice, a practice makes perfect. Definitely. Um, so not saying that you don't leave your strengths alone because you don't want to neglect those, but it is set up for more of your weaknesses. Cool. So just like any other sport in basketball, if you ain't got a good left. Walk on that left hand all the time over there, but you still could go ahead and do it on the right. Same thing in tennis. If you got a good right hand or boom, you still go on. You sometimes you want to practice on your left. Mm -hmm. So it um same thing in track and field. Sometimes hey, you might want to figure out the black start, how you put another inch or two, or whatever the situation, or just or timing. So practice makes perfect. And guess what? You put in is what you're gonna get yeah. out. You understand? And that is one of the the, the, the the international traditional thing all across the world. It's what you put in, it's what you're gonna get out. 
And what we're going to put in is a commercial break to the next segment. And VIOC, actually my boy over here, Clayton, preparation to eight year journey to Rio, uh, the Rio Olympics 2016. <laughs> All right. Hey, welcome back to VIOC in action. We're sitting on here with the number one heavyweight champion boy over here, Mr. Clayton, representing for the Virgin Island, aka Rock City. You know, the man to do a thing. You man say he, he, only, he only traveled to St. Croix, so that's why he had to go to football, so he had to go international <laughs> to boxing. But that's how the tingo for the tingo. So, rolling straight in with my boy Clayton 2000. 11 which is pan ams guadalajara correct how did that go because i i had a good time in guadalajara um that was good we that's the second largest city in mexico and let me tell you we had some big snapper i ain't know how they get snapper out there because that's the middle of the, yes, of the place yes. but hey that was a great time Definitely. how was guadalajara 2011. guadalajara was exciting man pan ams um, first pan am games mm -hmm. uh it was crazy getting there um so many shortcomings man where to begin? It took me. I had to go to the last qualifier to qualify the for the qualifiers. first round. And that's, that's that's like a pressure where you got a whole season, and literally you got the last match, and you're like, ah oh, man, like I literally it, like this is is it? Is either this year or it done? I gotta watch everybody in the paper when they come back and hear their stories, or I can put it all out there and then see what happened. It will hit or quit, man. Like I went to Venezuela, I went to the first one. End up going down there and uh, end up meeting up with the guy from Santo Domingo. Mm -hmm. Destroy this dude, man! Like, I after the fight, he couldn't fight after the fight. What? I broke a few ribs. Back up the man by. I still, I lose that fight. I was like, wow. All right, cool. Wait, so this <clears> keep on like you keep on boxing all these people, these people coming out here in wheelchair and thing, and you still losing these fights. I so lose that fight. They then might not like you at all. The like. next fight was in um uh Queen Quinca Ecuador. Okay. So Ecuador is like uh Quinca, Ecuador. So high altitude. Okay. Very cold. In mm -hmm. the arena, you have a jacket. How cold it was. Nobody was what? fighting. It was that cold. So we got in there. I fight in Ecuador, Ecuador. Just mm -hmm. my luck, right? Right, right, right. Fight this short dude. I'll boxing him everything. They ain't giving me no point. Mm -hmm. He touched my gloves, he gets a point. So my girl's like, yo, you got to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> so I went out there for the gusto. Man, I almost got, I almost I knocked him down a few times, didn't get any points. Um, got, he, he got a standing A count three times, which automatically is supposed to end the match. Uh -huh. Referee end the match. So, lose that fight. Cool. He couldn't fight the next fight because Round. I broke one of his ribs. Uh -huh. Didn't qualify for the Panams. So now we in uh, Panama. So okay. we're in Panama. Now Panama City qualifying for the, for the Panams. So I f my first fight is against a guy from the Bahamas. Okay. Um, no, yeah, Bahamas. I beat him. Mm -hmm. Then um, I'm fighting for gold and silver. Mm -hmm. I fight a guy from Colombia. Okay. Really, really good dude. Mm -hmm. We had a good fight, but he just had a little bit more skill than I did. Mm -hmm. And he outboxed me, qualified. Boom. So now we get to Mexico. So three, all on three right now. Oh, 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 and three. So, all no, right, right. no, so I won a three and one, a two and one. Okay, okay. So the okay, third okay. qualifier, I qualified okay. with the silver medal. Okay. So I make my, sp I get my spot. So I find my ticket to Guadalajara. So now, coach is like, yo, we got to work on some things. We got to be ready for Guadalajara because these mm -hmm. are the guys you go meet and they're going to beat you the second time around. Mm -hmm. Say less. So we, we, there, we got there like two weeks before competition starts. So we train in morning, afternoon, evening, cutting weight. Like, we in shape, shape. Mm -hmm. Fight time comes, I'm fighting uh, Puerto Rico. Couldn't wait to fight Puerto Rico, watch them. Mm -hmm. I knew exactly how to beat him, everything. So, um, lo and behold, I'm in my room, resting. Because um, I was scheduled to fight the next day. Mm -hmm. But my father mixed up the days. So I was actually scheduled to fight that day. Right, and we right, right, missed right. the bus to ah. go to the arena. The arena was like three hours away. Okay. So now... They call up to us like panicking, like, like we are, yeah, we are like that, that, that. So we jump on the bus. So three hours, the man saying. Uh. So I'm already late. So now it takes us three hours to get there. We get there. As I'm coming out for the bus, the officials are looking for me because they're about to forfeit me. Yeah, right, for not right, being right, there right. for the fight. So I literally have to strip while I'm walking to the arena because uh -huh. I have to go in. Right. So right. I had I went in there without any stretching, out warming up right, to right, fight right. where we go. So as you know, you warm up in the ring. So the first two rounds didn't go as planned. Yeah, right, Still warming right. up. 
from round three to round four was mm -hmm. army. So I closed the gap from being down by seven points mm -hmm. to being down by two points okay. within the second, the uh, third, and fourth round. Um, I don't think I did enough to pull it down just because of how bad I started off. Right. So I ended up losing uh, by two points again. Mm -hmm. But um, that had nothing to do with skill. It's just that we had to mix up with the schedule. Right. So And that's that's error on the coach, so you guys know. Um, the yeah. athlete usually... I mean, not that the athlete shouldn't know everything. It's just that sometimes, honestly, some of these games will get chaotic. Timing, the date... Sometimes it'll be in Spanish. Not that we shouldn't know Spanish, but it's Spanish. It'll be in... Well, when you get to the Worlds, it's in Spanish. It's in English. It's in... Um, it's, it's, it's French. It's, it's French. Um, and then it's in Greek. Um, because Greek is the original language for um, Olympics. And then you just got to figure out those things. And then the timing hours, the change... But hey, it happens to the it happens to the best of us. Um, um, it been events where I got there late, just because either just the traffic or whatever the situation had to run out there. No one went up and had to jump, which is the worst thing to do. You got warm up, dynamic warm up, or something, so you don't pull something. But that's why we are the world elites. <laughs> you know, exactly. I don't tell anybody that's a beginner, but do know you need to have a short warm up and a long one because situations like this will happen. When you enter into the international um so this was panam games and panams is the third year after olympics so like i said championship the first year second year is the is the cac games the games are the qualifier for panams and then panams are the quali official qualifier for the olympic games which is the third year out and now this would be going into london correct 2012 um half of the team that was there well, actually, a little, I think the same amount of people that went to Beijing four years ago before then is among the same people that went to twenty uh, to to London. How did you miss out on London? Um, London was different, man. Um, two thousand eleven, it came off a great, great, great run. I went to a tournament in two thousand eleven called the Paul Murphy um, t Championship Tournament. Won the belt, came back home with the belt after scoring two knockouts. Uh -huh. So I went up there and devastated those guys. Uh, 2012 was a quiet year for me. I really didn't have much activity in 2012 until we got to the Olympic qualifiers in Rio, Rio de Janeiro. Okay. Um, the same. Oh no, no, sorry, not the same place. But I forgot. This is 2012. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, so, um, so in 2012, the qualifier was in Brazil, not Rio de Janeiro, but in Coco Palau. Okay. Coco Cabana, uh, Rio, uh, Coco Cabana, Brazil, um, and it was really cool. We went there. And I had Brazil in Brazil. Mm -hmm. So my coach already told me, yo, you got to beat the brakes off of this dude. In their country because, hey. I went out there and I beat the brakes off of this dude. You see me Scored two knockdowns. Um, I was winning a fight. And all of a sudden, when the last bell rang, it went from being 12-11 to being 13-12 mm -hmm. Brazil. Okay, they have one. So we like, we like, what well, the bell don't ring. How how we get a point? So we went to we went to a final dispute. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. Like the it was like the whole the whole um stadium booed because I basically had this dude out on his feet Correct. for the better half of two rounds. Mm -hmm. You know, and they they told me I didn't score anything. Like so that was crazy. So I lost. That was my only shot. And the next qualifier was um in Dubai, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And our federation did not have the money to send me there. So. I only had one attempt to get to 2012. Okay, which was down in Rio. Correct. I mean, uh, in Brazil. Brazil. All right, so as you guys can see now, we got four years in preparation after the last Olymp, well, two last Olympics. So we got Beijing preparing. So this is like the gain up to how you guys can understand that it take time. Like things happen throughout the year. It take time for you to actually get there. We got four years to do it. But sometimes even take more than that. As we can see, it can take eight years. And in that time, you're literally trying to fix X's and O's, the do's and the don't, what work, what don't work. But you gain older, you gain smarter, you gain these experiences. But as your body is wearing out too, like you gain exactly. tired because you're like, dude, I don't have no time to, to rest. Like I got to do more and more and more. So you got all these things going inside of you, different training styles, going to different camps, different people like... The, the ranking keep on changing, the rules changing. You get all this stuff happening to you, and you just like, man, I just, I just want to go there, and I, I just, I just want to compete. 
You know what I mean? Um, So no, missing up on this opportunity for the lack of uh, resources for funds Mm -hmm. to go to to that was way in Dubai. That's a pretty long uh, flight too. And a pretty expensive one if you don't have any miles. Just to let you guys know. That was the last world qualifier. Literally, you know. And okay, you have to watch it on TV. Dreams done gone. Miss 2012. It's all cool. London. All right. Next. Okay, so now this is like, okay, again, Ola. This is boxing. I get four more years now. What's going on in your mind now? Like you had some, you have and had some success in those four years, but now psychologically, what's going on in your mind to prepare these next four years from 2012 to 2016? I gotta be better. That's it. 2012. Is, okay, and then this is the time. I, I, if I can, if I can remember, going into let's say 2013. Now, um, we're here. I know you starting to. I, I think. I think. What's going on? What happened in 2013? Um, going into like i know you started doing some 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 things back home and you started doing i think you went to california a couple of times like how are you preparing to go to the next um olympics which is 2016. um 20, uh, 2013 is just um analyzing the sport i was upset mm-hmm. i was like man i'm done with amateurs there's a heap of robbery i want to go pro because right after 2012 they took all the headgears you and see? the change the, the rules are always changing in uh in amateur boxes i'm like yo if i can be good with all head gear man that's what i get paid to do it right you know my dad's like no olympics is important continue to build continue to grow you know it's not that time yet all right cool so i was like look well we gotta go back to the drawing board i need to be more active and we gotta get something to go mm-hmm. so 2013 i kicked off there wasn't any tournaments going on so i went to the power morphe again in 2013 after i went to 2012 as well and 2013 uh, in 2013, I won my knockout again, mm-hmm. um, and I destroyed the competition until nobody wanted to fight me um, when I went up there. It's like, yo, we don't want any smoke when I do it. <laughs> well, we that's a big. good thing. That's a good thing. But it's a good thing, but you ain't going to fight. Yeah. So, so you, well, you it, can't it's, qualify it's, if you ain't going to fight. Yeah, so it's it's bad. It's good. It's good because I'm good. It's bad because I need fights to, to, to gain skill. So that was that... Um, 2014 kicked off with the CACs. 20, yeah, 2014 CACs. Let me see. CACs 2014. Can I remember back that far? That Veracruz. Veracruz, yep. Cold Mexico again. Veracruz and Jalapa. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You guys so, all and a half. Yeah, yeah. Months. So at these games, guys, um, usually, okay, so a country get a game, city get a game, but sometimes all of the actual discipline of the games are not in that city and you have to travel out. Just as you can see when... He was down there in... Um